on January 8th, a precision bombing strike lasting almost an hour by Guam-based B-52s was directed against an area in the Iron Triangle, the B.C. fastness some 13 kilometers northwest of Saigon. The strike was a prelude to a combined arms search and destroy mission by elements of the 173rd Airborne Brigade, the 1st Infantry Division, and a Royal Australian Regiment. Armored personnel carriers attacking at high speed lead the assault on enemy bunkers. Viet Cong positions are easily overrun. Sporadic sniper fire is soon silenced, a perimeter of defense established, and the area secured. Working in conjunction with the assault forces, artillery units of the 173rd Airborne hastily occupy positions. A 105 howitzer battery is soon firing on known and suspected BC concentrations. This joint search and destroy mission was aimed at an area near the boundary of Hangzhou and Binduang provinces, believed to be the center of BC operations against the Saigon sector of South Vietnam. On January 15th, elements of the 1st Infantry Division began Operation Buckskin in an area some 6 kilometers south of Lai Ke and 10 kilometers north of Saigon. Sky Raiders bomb the objective areas in advance of infantry attacks and provide close air support as ground forces move in for the assault. Three days after Operation Buckskin got underway, these units were filmed on a sweep through the B.C. stronghold. The main purpose of the operation was to clear the area of an estimated battalion of Viet Cong. The firepower and shock action of M48 tanks and armored personnel carriers are brought to bear against the enemy. This clearing action, which ended with the ceasefire for the Vietnamese Lunar New Year, took place in Binh Duong province. The area has long been a BC entrenchment. Buildings belonging to the Viet Cong or to their collaborators are burned to the ground. During a lull in combat, landing zones are marked by smoke grenades for resupply helicopters. During the five-day operation, resupply and the evacuation of light casualties were completed largely by helicopters. On January 18th, the U.S. Navy ship General Nelson Walker dropped anchor three miles off the coast of Vietnam near the town of Bung Tau. On board were elements of the 25th Infantry Tropic Lightning Division, previously stationed at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. Boat teams are assigned, and the troops quickly begin loading aboard LCMs for the short trip to shore.
This contingent sailed from Hawaii on January 4th. Other elements of the 25th were deployed earlier to Vietnam by air. The six LCMs that ferried the units ashore are operated by Army personnel of a transportation company based at Bung Tau, a village overlooking the entrance to the Saigon River. As the first LCMs near the beach, their ramps are quickly lowered and the debarkation of Tropic Lightning troops is well underway. Personal gear is carried ashore where the men will assemble by units for movement to their staging area. General Westmoreland, commander of U.S. forces in Vietnam, was on hand to welcome the commander of the arriving unit and the men of the 25th. Prior to their departure from Hawaii, these units have taken part in several counterinsurgency exercises. They are also highly trained in jungle warfare of the type they are likely to encounter in Vietnam. Local security for the debarkation was provided by Army elements stationed at Bung Tau. As fast as units debark, troops and equipment are loaded aboard waiting trucks. The convoy moves out from the beachhead. The trucks will shuttle the men and their equipment to the Bung Tau airstrip, approximately one mile away. At the airfield, the next step in the massive deployment gets underway. Personnel of the 25th offload from the truck and move immediately to board waiting C-130. These planes will transport the men and their personal equipment to the Bien Hoa airfield, approximately 45 air miles away. This is the last major link in the chain of deployment, known as Operation Green Light. Five C-130s, each carrying 75 troops, worked in relays at 40-minute intervals to complete this stage of the movement. Next stop is Bien Hoa Airfield, some 14 miles northeast of Saigon. From Bien Hoa, this newest army force in Vietnam will move to its staging area nearby. Other elements of the 25th Division were deployed in December to the An Khe area, some 250 miles northeast of Saigon. At the Bien Hoa airfield, deuce and a half trucks of the 1st Logistics Command move to the unloading zone. Fourteen days after they departed Hawaii, these units of the Tropic Lightning Division are nearing their destination. The troops debark from the C-130s and move immediately to board waiting trucks. The trucks move out for the U.S. Army staging area, approximately five miles distant. At 
the staging area, the troops offload and move to unit assembly areas nearby. Here, Major General Seaman, commander of the 1st Infantry Division, welcomes the advance elements to Vietnam. Tents are pitched as the units await assignment to their base of operations. On January 19th, one day after these elements of the 25th Division debarked at Bung Tau, their heavy equipment and support troops arrive at the port of Saigon. Trucks and other heavy equipment were offloaded from the commercial merchant vessel that afternoon. The drivers who had accompanied the trucks from Hawaii immediately placed them in convoy and moved out to join their unit, some 12 miles north of Saigon. Shortly before dawn on January 22nd, a terrorist bomb exploded against the outside wall of this building, which is located in the Gia Din section of Saigon. U.S. casualties were reported as one killed and one injured. The building, which had served as the headquarters and enlisted billets for an army signal unit, was also damaged extensively. The terrorist charge, which was placed against the building from a small alleyway outside the U.S. compound, also injured a number of Vietnamese citizens and damaged Vietnamese homes nearby. Adequate and satisfactory spare parts and replacements are vital to the effectiveness of any army unit. At Thompsonut Airfield, documents received with a helicopter tail rotor assembly are checked. The rotor assembly is then carefully unpacked from its shipping container and inspected. In a conflict where operations rely increasingly upon helicopter support, such essential spare parts must be available for immediate replacement. In another operation at Thompsonut Airfield, the wing of a U-1A Otter aircraft is prepared for replacement after having been repaired. The lifting harness is securely attached to the wing which will be moved by a wrecker to the Otter fuselage for installation. These maintenance and repair activities are performed by a special transportation air recovery unit. At headquarters, U.S. Air Force Command, Pacific, located at Hickam Air Force Base, the commander of the 25th Infantry, Major General Wayan, congratulates Brigadier General Rumsey on the completion of Operation Blue Light, eight days ahead of schedule. The, uh, the length of this uh, operation has gone on now for uh, several weeks has currently proven a system, I think. Uh, it wasn't just a one-shot affair. You know, sometimes we can set records doing that. But uh, uh, this has wrung out the, uh, the uh, system that's, that's used between the Army and the Air Force for a movement of troops in a way that I don't think has ever been done before. And I suspect that this is probably uh, uh, the biggest and longest type of this operation we've ever run, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, uh, perhaps other than an exercise. As I told you earlier, uh, unfortunately what we 
win on the bananas, we lose on the peanuts. <laughs> and uh, our boss is going to expect this kind of performance from now on out. <laughs> sure he is. Well, that's Gerald Anson. That's why you got the operations you got. Well, let me congratulate this crew and wish them well. All right. And we'll get them on their way. Yes, sir. This C-141, supplied by General Rumsey's command, the 61st Military Airlift Wing, is beginning the last logistical flight in support of Operation Blue Light. During the operation, elements of the 25th and cargo were transported from Hickam Field to Pleiku, Vietnam. Project Helping Hand actively got underway at this Honolulu housing community known as Foster Village on January 22nd. The purpose of the project, which was inaugurated by those elements of the 25th Infantry Division recently deployed to Southeast Asia, is to gather gifts and needed materials for deprived citizens of South Vietnam. Foster Village, the first U.S. community to support the project, responded to the appeal by holding a collection rally. Contributors, including boy and girl scouts, brought clothes, toys, seeds, small farm implements, and other gifts. Men of the 25th will distribute the gifts, in turn, to needy Vietnamese under this civic action program. Mm -hmm. 